All right, let's talk business in the 217. Of course, we do this each and every Wednesday with Michelle Ombi, the publisher of the Springfield Business Journal. She's got her thumb on the pulse of what's going on in the business community and uh, very much looking forward to hearing more about uh, a variety of business news, including Michelle. Uh, We've got uh, Roots Latin Grill expanding. Tell us about this. Here because, of course, they opened up in uh, the fall of 2019, right before the pandemic, but by all accounts seem to have done very well. They're out there uh, way west on Wabash in one of those strip centers uh, that Corky Joyner has out by Cobblestone. And if you can picture that, that particular retail center, they are on the far west end. There's a Lucy's Place right next to them, and then there's a vacant space on the other side that used to be a, a building supply company. They are now taking over that additional space that formerly housed the building supply company, uh, about 1,700 square feet, and opening up a, a bar and lounge called uh, Sokovan. And I had a chance to chat with uh, Luis Morales, the owner, yesterday, and he said uh, a lot of people come to the restaurant just to drink. Uh, they kind of specialize in more more high-end. You know, he said this isn't your standard Jack and Coke. These are very uh, handcrafted cocktails and kind of some more unique drinks and that sort of thing. And he's also been doing live music at the restaurant, does some Latin jazz and some bossa nova. And so they're basically going to create this lounge area and move the live uh, the live music there and have a place where people can just come hang out and, and drink, but a little bit fancier experience than going to the bar. So uh, good to hear of those behind Roots Latin Grill expanding. Uh, we'll watch how that grows. Uh, talking with Michelle Ombi, publisher of the Springfield Business Journal, here with Springfield's Morning News. And uh, not just Springfield getting a new sandwich shop, but apparently Decatur, Champagne as well. What's going on with pot? Hot belly sandwich. Yeah, so fans of uh, Pot Belly Sandwich will be happy to hear that they have just signed a franchise agreement with Rob Wilburn. Uh, he is a Springfield business owner. He's a CPA here and has had his hand in a number of different business ventures over the years. And so he now has the franchise rights uh, basically for Central Illinois, as you said, Springfield, Champaign, Decatur for a total of five locations. Um, no word yet on on timing, and he's not uh, not pinned down an exact location for the Springfield restaurant. But uh, sounds like we will be getting a pot belly sandwich in the near future. So looking forward to that as well. It's always good to have options uh, when you're interested in sandwiches, and we definitely have those options here in Springfield. Now, 827, let's talk more with Michelle Ombi, publisher of the Springfield Business Journal, and uh, we'll tell people how they can get a copy of the Springfield Business Journal on the regular, but... Let's talk about uh, what's going on with nursing home funding. You guys have some information about that with the SBJ. Yeah, not exactly a sexy topic, but certainly an important one for people to understand what's going on. Uh, Actually, the new issue of SBJ that comes out today focuses on seniors, and so this was one of our stories in the special section. You may recall that the, uh, the General Assembly passed some Medicaid rate reform, you know, it was highly touted, had bipartisan support and all that. The nursing homes were supposedly on board with it. And what it did was a, was uh, provided additional state funding for um, nursing homes to increase the pay for CNAs. You know, of course, there were staff shortages widespread even before COVID, which has only uh, only made the problem worse. And so this was tied to the rate of patients uh, receiving Medicare. So, for example, if, if you had 60% uh, Medicaid residents at your facility, then you could get reimbursed for 60% of the cost of raises to CNAs. And the whole idea was both to help retain existing staff and to attract new CNAs to the facilities. But it's it's not an automatic sort of thing. The nursing homes have to apply for this funding. And in the area that includes Springfield and Sangamon County, only about 20, just over 20% uh, of facilities have applied for these additional funding sources. And, uh, you know, they, they do have to meet some benchmarks uh, if they take the extra money. So that might be the reason that some of them are declining it. Maybe uh, it's just too much paperwork and bureaucracy, but kind of interesting to see that even though all this additional money is available um, and, and virtually every place is hiring, a lot of the nursing homes are not yet taking advantage of that uh, that extra funding. Yes, again, like you said, it's not the sexiest of topics, but uh, definitely important for a lot of those who have uh, loved ones in uh, a congregate setting like a nursing home. Michelle Lombe, publisher of the Springfield Business Journal, tell us where we can get a copy and how we can uh, subscribe. 
Well, you can go to springfieldbusinessjournal.com and sign up for BizBytes. That's our newsletter that comes out every Wednesday afternoon, and that is free of charge. And uh, as I mentioned, the new print edition is coming out today. And if you want to make sure you get that delivered directly to your home or office, you can sign up for the uh, print version online as well. Springfield Business Journal with Business in the 217 each and every Wednesday here with Springfield's Morning News. Greatly appreciate your time. We'll talk next week. All right. Thanks, Greg.